listening to Around Comics. Comics. You are listening to Around Comics. You're also watching Around Comics, episode 410. A little late, but better late than never. And I'm Brian Salazar. With me is Christopher Niesman and Tom Caters. We're here to talk about uh, comics, specifically one comic book, one book, one graphic, one collected edition of comic Play books. Play the singer. Oh, it's trade talk. This is our trade talk. This is Chris's trade talk. Wolverine, old man Logan from Mark Miller and Steve McNiven. And yeah, what's happening, fellas? What's going on? What's up? I talked to our buddy uh, uh, Andy Parks last night or two nights ago. Nice. He want, wanted me to say hello. How is he doing? Well, I think he's doing well. We nice. talked. Uh, we talked about uh, our Capote in Kansas. Oh, you, oh, are you? Is this uh, um, uh, it's a real crimes? Okay. A real, real crimes, crimes bonus episode. Nice. Capote in Kansas. Yeah, yeah Capote. So he could talk about Capote for hours. Oh, he had some great stories. He really did. Oh, I bet. I bet. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, enough of that. Yeah, we're we'll here. Talk to, we're here real to times talk. later. Yeah. Uh, this here is our trade talks episode on Wolverine, Old Man Logan. Uh, Ooh. which a uh, real quick uh, rundown. This was my pick. Uh, it's written what 2009. It's a uh, uh, Mark Miller, uh, Steve McNiven. I'm assuming is it Maury Hallowell? Uh, Maury on on. Yeah, Maury Hallowell Maury. on on colors. That's I mean. He and McNiven are kind of, you know, peanut butter and jelly that way. Connected. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. this is this is one of those uh, books I would I would put in the um, I will. Uh, this yes. sounds weird. I'm going to put it in that category with like Born Again. Don't make um, it weird. It's not weird. It's um, in that <laughs> it's kind of this this landmark um, uh, story that actually took place within the, the regular ongoing. It's like a standalone right. story, but it was mm -hmm. in, in the ongoing series. So this took place in Wolverine numbers... 66 through 72. Yep. It was an eight-issue uh, arc. Mm -hmm. uh, September 9th, 2009. And yeah, came out of the um, Fantastic Four. Ultimate Fantastic Four, uh, or or actually just the Fantastic Four run, which featured Old Man Logan and Bruce Banner Jr. as an adult, and then and then this came out of that. Oh, okay. And Miller did that, right? The Fantastic yeah, he was writing Fantastic Four, and then he had, uh, if I remember correctly, it was like you know, Reed was fucking around with some technology as usual, opened yeah. up some sort of portal. I don't remember exactly. I haven't I read it in a while. Yeah, I, but I'm just guessing, and and yeah. then uh, yeah, we we got Old Man Logan for the first time, um, yeah. but then he wrote this uh, as a yeah arc. I don't know if he was writing Wolverine at the time. I don't think he was. No, was he? He, he, he just did enemy, this. He had done Enemy of the State uh, before this, and that was was that also in just the regular Wolverine ongoing. Or I don't know. Probably. If that, was a, probably. that was a more common thing at that, you know, like yeah. back in the day, right? Like they yeah. would just kind of have these arcs that would happen and it all of a sudden, it, oh, wow, this is a really amazing story mm -hmm. yeah. from this particular arc of, of ongoing yeah. comics. Now it's its own mega event, you know, and, yeah. and well, 75 times. It were, you know, the, the Tom King style, you know, 12 issue miniseries, you know, it's right. Um, you know, that kind of that kind of stuff. The reason the reason I picked this one, uh, first of all, I loved it whenever it came out. Uh, I, we were we were that was around comics volume one, I guess, whenever this came out. I saw there's <laughs> there's a cover in here. Uh, it was a Wolverine Old Man Logan uh, cover for Wizard magazine. Number Michael like, Turner, the, the Michael Turner one. 
I mean, this one, well, this is the Michael Turner cover. Okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. that that makes it of an error right there. So, I mean, yeah, what Turner's happened to Michael alive. Turner? He died of cancer. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, my God. I yeah. forgot that he had died. I, I shit you not. I apologize. I apologize to Michael Turner in memory. Um, no, I forgot that he had died. And, and, and when, I, when I went to read this, I saw the Michael Turner cover and I, I kind of chuckled a little. I'm like, oh, man, that really sets it in place, like you're saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And my first not. thought was like, what happened to Michael Turner? How come Michael Turner isn't making comic book covers anymore? Because he's dead. Because he died. I forgot well, he died. I remember, my apologies. If you remember, it was uh, Wizard World, what, 2000? Was it 2000? That, oh, my yeah. God, that's right. Yeah, and we were there. Like, yeah, and that was the weekend that Michael Turner died, and that was kind That's of the weekend that right. Wizard World died. It was, that was <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, that was the was last kind of... uh, big hurrah, the Knuckles fiasco, and yeah, all yeah. that craziness that happened. I got uh, really high and drunk with uh, a guy that writes <laughs> wrote Daredevil after that, <laughs> and a bunch of other people. Yeah, that work in uh, comics that I won't mention. No. And this is actually, I think, this is actually like two or three years after after that uh but it was kind of like the last year that that wizard world chicago was kind of like the destiny i think c2e2 may have started like the next year or something like that mm. um mm. so so anyway that was uh our little uh michael turner a little sidetrack. road uh return to memory lane what do they call it what do they say trip down Journey? memory lane. trip down memory yeah. Lane. Yeah. yeah but that but that puts you know it's 2009 i mean we're getting on a little yep. bit we're working on like 13 years now so this is Good. starting to have some Lord. some yeah. some long teeth to it uh the reason i i picked this is because marvel has really built off of of what the series kind <laughs> yes. of started in, in a, a little way. yeah a little you know, yeah yeah like oh. wastelanders is all of a sudden kind of a, a uh, very interesting, but but uh, well published pocket universe for yeah. for Marvel and well, talking to Sal, they even have like a series of podcasts, like with Susan yeah. Sarandon and what uh, uh, Christopher from uh, The Sopranos, Michael Imperioli. Uh, well, so, like big time talent. It's it's got that Millar money, man. Yeah, right? think that, about this, like money maker, baby. <laughs> he wrote back to back Civil War and then Old Man Logan. And yeah. think about the Marvel MCU, you know, movie universe. Yeah. And, you know, obviously Old Man Logan inspired the movie Logan. I mean, that, you know, it's like you probably yeah. wouldn't even have that movie really, or at least the, the the aesthetic and everything of that movie from Old Man Logan. And then Civil War was, you know, just a huge part of the whole Avengers, you know, multiple movies. Yeah. It wasn't just the one Captain America movie. That and then kind we'll of talk about this later. The Ultimates. He, yeah, yeah it's I mean, like... Th- that. Th- this, the Ultimates, was kind of the fucking template for the MCU Avengers. Yeah. Yeah, if, absolutely. It's, for know, sure. It's no Samuel question. Samuel Jackson was in the comic before he's in the movies. And, and then he goes yeah. on to do his own sort of thing with Netflix and, and create, you know, Kingsman. Mm-hmm. That's got, you know, so it, what is, there's been three movies. Kick-Ass. There's been a couple of, you know, two or three yeah. Kick-Ass movies. There's been uh, Wanted. You know, others, Wanted and a few other yeah. things that he's done. Not everything's been okay. great, but yeah. uh, I was, pretty I, impressive. I was going to say, I was going to say, I, I haven't read this in a while and I read this and I think I might this might be my favorite Mark Millar book. Oh, well, 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 yeah. really? interesting. Yeah, I think so. It's, it's I mean, fun I've liked and terrible. I, um, yeah, I've liked other <laughs> things he's done, but like I'm like, actually, I think I like this the most as a whole. You know, like I've always I have a tremendous amount of respect for anyone who can like create such really great simple concepts which is what he's really That's great at is Mark like Miller. yeah like boil it down to like you know especially in a world like a comic book world where like let's face it most comics if you had to explain what the fuck is happening at any time like it's hard to condense it to like <laughs> this is what the story is you know like and he does yeah. a really great job of like you know what the story is about you always know what the story is about it's not you know like he boils it down keeps it like really focused and like you're like i get what's happening in this story i understand like the stakes i get like the plot you know like it's it's i mean that sounds like a backhanded compliment but there are plenty of comics where 
I can't explain to you <laughs> like what what was that story about motivation what, yeah what, what's we'll, the we'll, character we'll talk about we'll talk about war on earth three um <laughs> or it's like well I don't know why any of these characters are doing any of this right mm-hmm. and like I think he he always does a really great job of that but I think what makes this one my favorite one is he shows in a, in a way like a, a little bit of restraint that he doesn't usually show like <laughs> like wow, the okay. way that he makes you wait wait yeah for for a wolverine well it's to it's the wolverine yeah. i love i love this book too i really do and and you know, the whole old man wolverine sort of universe that it spawned yeah but i do almost like hold a, a little bit of a i and i do this a lot with stories which yeah. is weird but it's basically i mean it's a western you know it's it's shane oh, totally. oh, it's, yeah. it's it's it's, it's the yeah. gunslinger that doesn't want to you know yeah. pull his gun out you know it's un- one it's last time it's unforgiving. yeah it, it, right? it's so it's it's that but he does yeah like he makes you wait and 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 you're just when is wolverine gonna pop the claws when is you the know, gunslinger you know what's yeah. gonna happen yeah you know it's, but it makes you know, yeah it makes perfect sense because wolverine you know i think when he was first introduced you know he maybe nobody really knew what he was he was just sort of like a character an idea for a character but then like writers got a hold of him at some point and kind of you know the whole <laughs> sort of japanese storyline where he goes to japan and, and they brought that really uh, as a, a part of his mythos and his history and he turned him into a samurai you know what i mean like the writers turned him into a samurai and it made perfect sense and then he goes from a samurai to a to a gunslinger which is sort of you know akira kurosawa to unforgiven or or to you know whatever the uh, sergio leone kind of thing where yeah. it's it's the same sort of of transformation it makes perfect sense and he's yeah. he's but, the right character for it yeah credit credit but, it still, for that. but it still stays <clears throat> true to the heart of why the samurai approach is interesting to him because it's still about the tension of the story of between logan and wolverine and like am i in control of who i am mm-hmm. like you know and that's what the story that's that's the heart of the story is like it, you know his battle of like you know what I, what am i really right and that's always the most interesting part of the most interesting wolverine story is this him am i a man or am yeah. i an animal yeah, am I, like, yeah what yeah. am i you know like <laughs> can i control myself and like you know when i said earlier that i always i enjoy uh, millar's ability to condense things down sometimes i do feel that in the books where i love the concept and i don't love the book as much he almost gives too much at the start and it kind of feels like you know i always i love the concept of kick ass but i always feel like one issue of kick ass was kind of like ah yes. <laughs> all you needed <laughs> yeah or you know you know yeah. what i mean yeah, like there yeah. was that it was like ah okay i get i get what this is it's cool i like it you know whereas mm-hmm. uh in this there is like a really nice like approach of like you're not going to get the thing you want as fast as you want it because yes. i'm gonna hold it but, back as long as possible but, but, but you i'm still do. gonna give you stuff but you, <coughs> you do you, you just get, get it from hot you get it from hawkeye yeah but you get yeah. you don't get the the claws don't come out until <laughs> you know well, that's what you're waiting for everybody's waiting that's what for, you're waiting you know. for it. come on how can like, he take this how can you know can, it's a, can yeah, you name it's another like, comic that used a double page spread for a type treatment <laughs> 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 It's the yeah. most famous. It's the most famous sound effect in all of comics, right? Is it? Come is on, it, is it, is it snip. What is more, Thwip yeah. is maybe, but I don't think maybe. Thwip is maybe more famous. Yeah, yeah. I think they're right. They're they're. Uh, I I, I would say Max Poll. I bet uh, that's a poll. What's more famous, Thwip? Or that, that would be yeah. What was I? I but I bet <laughs> in, in comics, it's snicked. It's snicked. It, if you look it at is. like general public, I bet you more people would know that than Thwip. It, just That's to look at the words, yeah, it is yeah, that, yeah. but contextless, yeah, like without any whip. like whip, fuck yeah. the whip. It's yeah, not even a. It's whip. not even a thing. Nobody, nobody gave a shit when you saw the whip in the Spider-Man comic. 
Whenever you saw Snicked, it was like, oh, oh fuck so yeah. Somebody, Somebody's so getting their get ass kicked. <laughs> Somebody's getting fucked up. When you saw yeah. Thwip, it was like, okay, Spider Man's swinging. Is, I guess. It, is it on? The... I would say Bamf is more famous than Thwip. Ooh, yeah. that's. Wow, you're really you're yeah. leaning into the into the X Men hard. Well, I, you know, I, like I don't Bamf. know if I would have if you said what are the most famous comic book sound effects sounds. I don't know if I would have said Thwip at any point. <laughs> Uh, you know the the most famous are Bam Pal, right? That's Batman. Yeah, yeah but those are generic. Been. Those aren't associated yeah, yeah, with yeah. any particular character. I think they're Bam would probably they're, come they're, they're associated of... with with 1960s Batman. Yeah, but all those people are dead. Anyone that's <laughs> anyone that cares about that anymore is you know basically dead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I get that too. But i okay. So from the comics, what other? Not to get too far off, but this is kind of an interesting topic. What other sound, sound effects. effects exist? Even anything you can, you can, anything you guys think of that, uh, are, that are character specific? Yeah, because I mean, other than those three, and Thwip, like I said, I don't even think Thwip. I think Thwip is like a newer one. Like I never oh, remember yeah, reading yeah. a Spider-Man comic and going, "Ooh, Thwip!" Yeah. Whereas Bamf, yeah. fuck yeah, and yeah, that's Snicked nice was yeah. like, come on. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I can't think of any other like characters. I'm sure there are some out there, but yeah, there uh, probably are. Yeah, to, but yeah. anyway, all right, back to uh, send, the, send uh, info at aroundcomics.com. Send us your uh, your yeah. comic book, uh, comic character specific. I think it's uh, like, oh, go ahead, Tom. I was Did gonna say, have... and then once the claws do pop. It's it, McNiven really gives you the full, like it's vi very violent. The full, you know, <laughs> heads, like heads, heads are yeah. flying everywhere. You know, not that the rest of the book it's wasn't violent, violent, but when book, the man, like there's a lot of violence, and there's but when the the claws come out, like they give it to you, like that's you that, get the payoff. You know, like, Millar, you the payoff. Miller, he always pays off. Always. Yeah, so, you Always. Know, yeah. yeah, it's he sticks the landing as well as any writer in comics repeatedly. And we've talked about this forever. You know, whenever you're reading a Miller comic, that you're going to have a conclusion to it. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think the only like the only one that I ever remember sort of just being like, "What the fuck was the Wanted one?" Which was such a you know, just a bizarre. <laughs> Yeah. Like, I think I said right. the same thing to you, and you, I think, looked at me and said, "What cuts a little too close to the bone?" Chris? Well, no, I, I, yeah, <laughs> I, I understand that, but it was, it was, I didn't care in the sense of like he was bitching at at sort of the comic book reader. That didn't that bother man, me. It was yeah, just, it was, was just sort of like a shitty fucking way to end a book. It and, was, you know what yeah. I mean? Like it was just sort of a, yeah. it was a cop out, and that was what I didn't expect because most of the time he doesn't do that. Most of the time he's able to come up. Yeah, you know, Most with of the time the, he sticks it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, how about um, the uh, you know they do tease the claws. I love that too. Early on, we get a tease, yep. and I hadn't read this in such a long time that when I saw it again, you know, when the when the Hulk <laughs> family shows up at the farm, and you have you know Wolverine gutting one of them, but it's it's a fantasy. It's sort of that you know I yeah. I fell for it. Yeah. I I was like ooh, and then I'm like oh shit, it's a you know it's a fantasy. He's not actually doing it because mm -hmm. I forgot. But that's a yeah. that was a, a a fun like teaser. But man, yeah, he you, you got to wait another se six episodes six or seven issues, whatever yeah. it is, until Wolverine you know finally yeah. does what he does best. Can we talk uh, yeah. about Redneck Hulk family? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, it's the inbred best. redneck Hulk family. I yeah, mean, what a what a fucking creative. I mean, who comes up with that? Who the fuck comes up with that? It's such a bizarre way to a thing to come up right? with when when you think of like Bruce Banner. I mean, Bruce Banner is always portrayed as sort of a very, you know, he's yeah. got seven PhDs, and he's nice. uh, the only thing anyone ever talks about Bruce Banner is his brain. But you know, it did sort of change along the way with Bruce Banner of like, yeah, he came from an abusive father mm. who was kind of a rednecky hillbilly kind of mm. guy. And so, you know, <laughs> eventually he kind of falls back into that pattern, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's a cycle. Well, I mean, he talks about it. It's like the radiation, you know, made him yeah, go crazy. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, it's yeah. probably the most disturbing line in the fucking book is when he talks about, about the the only woman that could keep up with his sexual uh, that was, prowess was yeah. his, was Jen, his cousin. Yeah, that was that was a little weird. That was a yeah. little over the line. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mark Miller, Zero, Donnie. <laughs> Miller. <laughs> Miller's often re- written about uh things like that taboo sort of things you know i mean you look at the authority which is one of my is favorite that the worst is that the worst the, authority's uh, got to be yeah. the worst i still the, the 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 super villain going back in time to molest right. a superhero's yeah. child you know her her as a child uh to to defeat her in the present day is one of the most fucked up things i think anyone could come up with like that is one of the most <laughs> fucked up ideas that's a twisted fucking idea i mean i appreciate it for what it is yeah. but it's like jesus god damn that's fucked up that's a Welcome fucked up to brain. comics in yeah. 2001 they were amazing <laughs> <laughs> i haven't read i haven't read the authority in a while i mean i have a giant authority mm-hmm. Poster, poster. Right? yeah it's a yeah that i got from challengers yeah. comics um but yeah i don't know if it holds up at this point in time That's i'm not sure how this one is that the if you're looking for the absolute it's the volume two you can't find the the warren ellis the the first kick and and miller's run of authority really changed what ellis had done i i oh yeah definitely yeah. put his own stamp mm-hmm. on it which i love yeah, and and it was uh, who was the artist? It was um, Frank Quietly. Frank Quietly, yeah. yeah that was, was the amazing. like my first introduction to Quietly, I think. Yeah, and, and then one of the reasons why I loved that run, I liked Ellis's run too. Uh, on oh the yeah, authority. it's great, yeah, but it's, it's different. Fucking, yeah, it's definitely different. Um, yeah. more cerebral, where Miller is a little <laughs> more visceral. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of, that's of the a thing. Right. It's- it's you know there was an interview with the and I, I think I've even mentioned this on, on the show before there was an interview way back when with the the guys that did Independence Day and Godzilla and yeah. the, the whoever was interviewing them was asking them about you know about movie making and they said you know what we love film we love watching film we we think that it can it can drill down into you know the deepest you know layers of the the heart of the hearts of men and, and explain, you know, mysteries of, of society and culture. We don't, we don't make films. We make movies. And I feel like Mark Miller is that guy, you know, where it's like you have Alan Moore over here and, and, and Mark Miller's like, that's amazing. I love that. I write comics. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's not, a, he, he's unabashedly sort of, you know, uh, just a fan i think of big explosions yeah. and he's wild kind of the michael he's kind of the michael bay of, of comic book writers a little yeah. bit a little bit there's, i right? think there's a little a little more to him than that but oh sure, but, sure. Uh, yeah. yeah but i mean there's a lot of water on that asphalt you know it's, there's yeah he likes there. shiny big shiny explosions and yeah, yeah for sure shiny explosions i think that's a thing right shiny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. if there was it would, it yeah. would be michael bay yeah. shiny explosions shiny but, shiny happy yeah. explosions but he's also yeah. really fucking good but he's really fucking good yeah, yeah. he's very good at what he yeah. does i mean you know he yeah. just it's it's not uh it's not necessarily going to be something where you're going to analyze it or you know it's it's comic book comic books it's yeah. you know it, but, it, yeah. but, it, but it's fun. It, has, it has depth it has weight i mean he wrote this eight issue story that basically like we said it created a pocket universe that marvel is spinning off multiple other stories and of multiple other media mm-hmm. and and that's i mean so it has to have it has to have weight to it and and substance to it even though it is you know at its base level it's just big action comic fun right well i think it does a good job. It does a good job of giving you a reason to like Wolverine. Yeah, I mean because like mm-hmm. I mean on a, like a character basis because I think sometimes some of these characters, even the most popular ones, I think they that the thing that gets lost a little bit, you know, when you're in four books a month or there's like two books about <laughs> you, it's like every once in a while it's nice to just have a story where it's like oh. 
like this is who this I is like yeah this is who this character is like oh okay like i get that as opposed to like continuity plot like development of like here's the twist of this and the twist of that and like wolverine's now the leader of the x-men and now we find you know like all the sort of like things you can get kind of lost in in yeah. that sort of like storytelling and well, every that, once in a while you're that, like oh oh okay like it's hard to look. It's, but, but the, it's hard. But this felt it felt like a logical conclusion to what that character would do in the situation. I never felt like this was out of character for Logan as a character as we know him. Right? It's just it's just pushing into a logical conclusion, which is not a bad thing. Well, that's no. Always, I mean, the, you know, a, a sort of dependent on you know how you look at the character it, it can you know it, yeah i don't but i think it you know it, i was what i was going to say is like it's hard to when you're driving forward constantly in a monthly book it's hard to ever look back and i think that's what this book you know this arc did is like what you're talking about tom is sort of like examining well he's past and him examining himself and his past and what he's done and in a monthly book, it doesn't always necessarily have the time or energy to kind of do that. It's just like, we got to move the story forward. We're moving the story forward. Trying to get so, to point A to yeah. point B. But I was going to ask you guys, do you think, because um, we talked about, you talked about, Tom, a little bit, like the idea of um, Wolverine sort of, you know, that samurai code becoming a part of him or the, uh, not, I'm sorry, not the samurai code, but the idea that, who am I? Am I a man? Am I a monster? Was I created? That kind of thing. Am I a mutant? Am I a science? That was yeah. sort of like Weapon X, right? Like, isn't that, is that kind of the first time that that was sort of brought into Wolverine's mythology, if you will? Was it Weapon X? Because that that was all about I'm like to, I'm trying he to was a science experiment, you know? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I just I mean, don't. I mean, I think it was touched on that time. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was touched on with, with Burn Claremont because that was sort of why he came to Charles Xavier. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that was why he mm -hmm. agreed to stay with the X-Men because, you know, that that sort of idea. Yeah. But that kind of got that... retconned in. Yeah. But, yeah, because, I mean, it, it, when he first shows up as an X-Men, it's because he was Canadian. Honestly. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm talking years, yeah. you know, yeah. after yeah. that. But, um yeah I, I i don't know i think i i want to say weapon x was sort of the really started to delve into that i mean i know like was like that the deep psychological dive yeah the idea of, of wolverine you know worrying about being an animal and not in control of himself which is you know kind of what this book is about but i but i feel like that was <coughs> the first time that was really part of his character or it was dealt with in any way it was like you know, because that was all about the program and him being, de you know, designed to be this killer and all this stuff and not being in control of himself, sort of a Manchurian candidate. And yeah. uh, and really pretty. And I think it, well, yeah, of course. <laughs> but I think um, I think that's one of the big things that, that, that really sort of propelled his popularity. You know what I mean? Like that part of his character was, was a big yeah. part. And it's an interesting thing of like, He's a, he's, I mean, you know, say what you will about Wolverine. Obviously he's been in dozens and dozens of books and, uh, you know, movies and all that stuff. And you can kind of look at him like a joke, a cliche kind of thing, but there's something to Wolverine like that fans have always gravitated towards. And I think that's mm -hmm. a big part of it. It's like that he's, he's yeah. a unique character in that way of like, he questions himself. You know, he has he has a very mysterious past mm -hmm. and we see glimpses of that. Yeah. We've gotten to see a lot more of it, but he questions his own perhaps actions too much. <laughs> perhaps he's, too he's, much. Well, yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's like that, man. He's he's dark and violent and and brooding, but also multi layered because there's tragedy in his past. And and he's constantly fighting with the with that question of of, of who he is. You know, it's, you know, um so yeah it's 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 a layered character i mean that lends itself to mass appeal right yeah yeah and I, I mean and i think millard does such a good job of putting little things in there to get to that like naming his son scott you know yeah, yeah. Like, you know like things yeah. like that that are like 
that kind of hint to the idea of like you know the wolverine's like feelings about how he was you know spoilers for the book i guess we can do spoilers for the book because <laughs> it's 2009 it's 2009 you know he was tricked into killing all the x-men you know yeah. by mysterio by right? fucking and mysterio like, by mysterio really? yeah and like yeah. you know dealing with his own like essentially committing the suicide to wolverine you know of like right. i can't be that anymore like i can't never use the claws again like the worst thing that could he could ever imagine doing he did right and he was like tricked into it right which is interesting to think about that the thing that would is the worst thing he could imagine was him betraying you know his the, friends the his family yeah, yeah. his friends yeah. is the thing that like broke him that like couldn't handle it that that he was tricked into doing that which is like you know it, seems obvious but is also like interesting to say about wolverine of all the things wolverine has done in like you know all the hints to all the terrible things he's done that's the thing that was like too much that like he couldn't come back from well he's also he, he, i think part of that is is like wolverine is is in some ways like this ultimate loner character right but he's mm -hmm. also fiercely loyal and once you know, I think that's part of like the attraction, you know, that character is like he is in a lot of ways. He's he's what people want to be to some degree, like they like people want to be kind of their own individual loners, but also want to be, I guess, respected for their loyalty. loyalty and that you know, that's yeah. a that's a, a characteristic that I think people are attracted to in him that it's just like he acts really gruff you know it's that kind of classic thing like he's the he's the yeah. hard ass with a heart of gold you know what i mean yeah, like yeah. he acts really tough and gruff but at the end of the day he's the most caring of of yeah of the character well, yeah, of the it's like you know people in your life it's like he is a good person who's trying to be mean and right right, there right. Are other people who are mean people who are trying to be nice yeah <laughs> yeah that's true and he yeah he's not right? He's not that. Uh, yeah, because yeah. yeah, at his core, you get to see the spider buggy. <laughs> <laughs> the spider buggy. There were so many like, little things in this oh, book that so that you could have done. Other lesser writers would have done entire books on like the moloid, the mole people, yeah. the mole. That like, what was that? Like, what, that was just thrown in there. The oh, kingpin. So oh, the the fucking kid at the toll bridge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> with the Ant Man helmet, it right? Like, yeah, it's like no, no, no eighty no, cents, no, eighty six cents. Or I'm gonna well kill you with the spent. ants. <laughs> yeah, or and then was, you see all the skeletons. <laughs> then you see all the skeletons under the yeah. bridge. You know, the, like he's the been... venom, the venom T Rex. You know, it's like yeah. there's I mean, so many so fucking Miller. cool things. Yeah, yeah. or you know, yeah, like you know, Emma Frost and just like hiding in Chicago. Yeah, yeah, with her own. All these things are like in the book for like four pages and then but you can like, right, see why it spawned so many other you know whether it's podcasts yeah. or you know other mm -hmm. comic series it's just like yeah you see he he created this whole little universe the second universe uh that you yeah. could play in and it's like oh i want to see that kid with the ant -Man. i want to see the story has anyone done the story on that kid with the ant-man helmet because i want to see that now you know right yeah like well, you know just a one shot of him fucking people yeah. up you know and that's what you know the podcast have because there's been been two wasteland. Well, we saw the Wastelanders books, which there was what Daredevil, um, Hawkeye, yeah, Hawkeye, Wal Hawkeye. Wolverine, uh, Black Widow, um, and Doctor Doom, right? Uh, and, and, yeah, that yeah, sounds so right. There's you know five of them, but you know it's like the whole setup, which kind of spawns out of this, is that is that Red Skull and the the all of the other villains finally figured out that if they banded together they could they could kill all the heroes and take over the world and there's and they 20 did. villains to every hero right which it's true. there are it's like figure it out <laughs> yeah. and oh that's uh joe uh gluzik just mentioned uh uh the giant falls which was an awesome double page spread oh yeah you had that's a couple of falls you had you had uh hammer falls which was mm -hmm. where Thor's hammer was still at. 
Yeah. And then you had, yeah. Giant uh, Falls. Was it Giant Falls? No, Pim yeah. Falls. Pim oh, Pim Falls. Pim Falls. Falls. Pim, yeah, yeah, Pim Falls. There was also um, Loki's corpse with the Baxter <laughs> building on top of it. Yeah. Giant like Loki, which apparently he was taking on his, you know, uh, giant, uh, the, what, Niesel, whatever it is, uh, form. That's a frost giant. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, but yeah, so, you know, it's, it's, it's the country has been split up into these regions where, and this is where it gets odd because in, in, you know, the, the podcast and the Wastelanders comics and this, it's all not quite stitched together perfectly. I mean, there are in one, he book, gave you one, a map. I know, I know. <laughs> the map, the map, the we map love maps. Changed. Great. You the, love, the you got, I mean, what a great, I just yeah. love. This is like here's a whole map, and it's like oh, map. What's this there? is where we're what's going. Yeah, Nerds love maps. Like, Nerds love like, maps. I think we even talked like, about is... that back in 2009. That pe- that that geeks love maps. Um, but yeah, like the Hawkeye Wastelanders podcast takes place in um, uh, Baron Zemo's uh, kingdom, and which is supposed to be apparently much better than Doom's kingdom. Like people went to Zemo's kingdom because it was. You know, there was actually, you know, a, a society and, and kind of this post-apocalyptic culture there. Um, and then, like, the Black Widow one takes place in somewhere in, you know, uh, Pennsylvania, you know, Philadelphia, in, like, this, uh, um, like, Mega City One type landscape. It's almost like a Judge Dredd. Everyone lives in these giant mega complexes because the world's environment has has gone to shit and you basically have to live inside so you know there's been some amazing stuff that's been spawned out of this which uh well you, you have know, the whole maestro games. all the maestro stuff oh. you have um i mean old man is logan my, has is its maestro, own maestro is maestro wastelanders though no. yeah i think it's isn't it i don't know it's not it's a different alternate <laughs> It's a different alternate. It's a different future. alternate universe. Yeah. Is it yeah. further in the future? It's a different. It's whatever well, world, but Peter David. But yeah, it's a different. I, I it's feel a, like yeah, it's a different it, one. Uh, see, I think it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I yeah. Don't know. We'll Wikipedia that. One. Yeah, we'll have to look but, it up. Uh, yeah, but uh, well, Old Man Logan has its own comic too. Like, there's the, the Old Man Logan book. I mean, its own. Which I have not read. I haven't yet. either. I need to. Apparently. I imagine it's his adventures with the with Bruce. Well, Jr. no, they brought old man Logan into current continuity at one point. Like he traveled through time. Yes, uh, that's what it is. Yeah, he ends up in the 616. So old man Logan is Earth 807128. Apparently. Sure, whatever. <laughs> what if sure? Whatever. Uh it's 500 years in the future. Um, it's 500 years in the future. Is yeah, I don't know. It's like I don't know. It's supposed yeah, to be like 30 years in the future. Well, not according to that. Yeah, still I don't have, know. Like, Black Widow is like 70 years old. It's like 30 years in the future. Whatever. Uh, it's, like I said, maybe this is. It, it, I don't know if it's this. I don't know if. if yeah, this storyline is 30 years in the future, but I think the rest of that universe or whatever. I don't fucking yeah. know. I don't know. Yeah. I can't keep track Whatever. of this shit. Read them. They're fun. Fucking don't worry about it. Don't take notes. Just enjoy. Maestro Hulk is Earth 9200. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it is a different, it is a completely different Earth. So there you go. Uh, see, I thought they were connected. I thought it was part of the um, the whole no, Hulk family it's, it's was part of it. No, because no, Banner's a, a, a incestual redneck out and yeah that makes sense oh. that makes sense that yeah it would be different now now that i think of it i was just like hey it's the future and there's crazy uh, it's shit one, it's all the same future uh, you know yeah <laughs> i don't know it's yeah, all yeah, i mean like ultimately what what makes this interesting is i mean we've read comics for for so long that we know that the that the good guys are going to win and if anyone dies it's not really going to be permanent <clears throat> we're in in these alternate you know pocket universe things when when spoilers when hawkeye takes a bullet to the head you know it's not <gasps> that character he's not he's not coming and so it's a no. it, it has fucking weight 
to it. And when Daredevil gets Daredevil and the Punisher get eaten by can what can I can I just point out that that is the coolest Daredevil costume ever right. created? Like that alternate Daredevil costume with the horns that are sort of part of that McNiven did. I'm like, I want to see that costume running around in Daredevil because yeah. there's been some shitty Daredevil costumes. And talk about McNiven for a minute because oh, this yeah. book is fucking brutal, man. It's I mean, yeah. I, I mean, dude, that train scene when when Wolverine is basically figures out that he killed every all of the X Men and then he lies down on a train you know you could have played that either way you 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 could have just like not shown it at all yeah but it's like no we're gonna show him getting we run over that. by a fucking train i think the most brutal fucking page is uh fucking ashley decapitating that dude with the with the butt end of a shotgun but in, yeah i don't know that that's possible I'm, I'm just I, well, I, mean, I don't she's got spider. She's got spider strength. Uh, so, does she? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. They never I mean, really. Yeah. For me, for yeah. me, it's just like the conclusion spider. of the story of like the Hulk eating Wolverine. <laughs> yeah. <and then> Wolverine <laughs> healing and then like cutting his way out of the Hulk is right. such a great so end to the story. Did either of you guys read um, Super Crooks? By by Miller. No. Okay, so it was an image this, book. Is this new, newish. Um, uh, re- last I don't know, five, seven years, something like that. It, it, it's relatively new, but it's a yeah, it's a book. Uh, it's a it's basically, um, kind of like uh, Miller's um, Brubaker. What was the Brubaker uh, Incognito kind of to some degree? It's basically about super villains, but it's really a super, you know, a superhero kind of oh, story. But yeah, but yeah. but it's about these super villains uh, committing crimes and stuff. And um, one of the the villains in the book, or I should say, two, were these twins that they they had like incredible healing powers, like ten times the healing power <laughs> of Wolverine. And after that book had come out, like a couple years later, on his message board, Miller was asking for. Uh, story suggestions like he you, you could send in a script and it would be in like a, a anthology or something so i <laughs> actually wrote a story about those two twins and and the story was i, I don't remember it all in my head but I, I did send it to him and i forgot about this hulk thing but basically the idea was they were uh they were getting ca- they were, like got captured by like a russian mobster or something cuz they had robbed from his bank or i don't remember what I, what i wrote but the gist of it was they were actually hired to assassinate this guy and the way they did it was they cut off the one and you don't find out the until the end of the story but you they cut off the one brother's head and shoved it in a motorcycle helmet and snuck it into the house in a motorcycle because he, he, there was just nothing but his head. And then his body grew back over time because he, <laughs> and he ended up assassinating the guy. So I just thought it was kind of funny. Like, like this, you know, this was years after he wrote this, obviously, but I'm like, Oh, no wonder he didn't fucking use it. He already did that with Wolverine. And it was way better. <laughs> <laughs> right. Something you ate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's the yeah, red it's skull. A, the the red skull was pretty oh, awesome. Uh, oh, just yeah. like another, dressing up in, another decapitation, dressing up in Cap's uniform and just like walking around the house like a weirdo. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It kind of had that like uh, J. Edgar Hoover feel to it, didn't it? Oh yeah, a little. Yeah, I could see yeah. that. For it's sure. a, it's you know I'm gonna I'm gonna dress up and kind of get off on it and you know don't fucking judge me for the. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of weird yeah. shit i mean it, it, there's a lot of good just sort of action stuff but then there's always some just kind of weird. weird like even the even the idea of like when banner first comes out he's just like this wrinkly old man that starts beating the shit yeah. out of wolverine right you know just even that idea of like no i'm not going to show the hulk i'm going to show yeah. wrinkly old banner with his glasses and you know. yeah which makes it cool it makes it even it fun. does i mean just miller just He's just like, oh no, I'm not gonna have the Hulk come out. I'm not gonna show you that yet. I'm gonna have fucking old man Bruce Banner come out, mm. who is a fucking old wrinkly badass. And then when Logan snaps, then then we go to town. 
Yeah. Then yeah, we yeah. go to town. Yeah. It's and you get the Hulk eating Wolverine. <laughs> A little indigestion. Well, uh, that's, I, I love Butler Ultron. But <laughs> yeah. there's so many things. There's so many little things in yeah. the, in this book. There really yeah, there is. Yeah. Ultron 8 was more of a father to her than you ever were. <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's great. And that's, there are all those little little moments in there that are like, oh, okay. Like, that... And to his credit, he flies through them to get yeah. to the story. You know, yeah. like you never linger too long on like, you know, like it never gets bogged trip. down. And like, it's a, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, like, it's a road trip. You're only going to stay at the world's largest ball of twine for so long. Yeah. You've got You're only going to stay at Loki's corpse for a, a frame. <laughs> That's all you need. <laughs> yeah. Time to move on to the next. Yeah. I, I, mean, I showed you the cool Louise, part. man. Yeah. I do have to say, as a Captain America fan, when the Red Skull saw, you know, Wolverine picks up Captain America's yeah. shield, and there was this sort of like, you know, a little bit of fear in just seeing someone carrying the shield, you know, like, ah, that was cool. There's all those little, yeah. I mean, <laughs> such a comic yeah. book nerd, you know what I mean, in his own right, Miller, that it's like he, he's able to put those little things in there that are just kind of extra special and and once again if you now look at that kind of stuff and then you look at like everything the russo brothers is it the russo brothers did did in the marvel universe like all the little easter eggs yeah, they, all the little yeah, yeah you know all the stuff that they they put in it's like ah oh, man i bet you i don't know how much mark miller was credited or how much he got paid for any of that stuff but man i, I, don't, I don't know if anyone it's, else it's weird. There is no MCU as we know it now without Mark Miller. Yeah. He just brought so yeah. many of those concepts, so many of the, it literally scenes that, you know, that he put together. I mean, the Ultimates set that. that the Ultimates basically was a script for a movie, yes. of, you know, an R rated yeah. movie of the Avengers. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. he was that doing is, it that long. Is, that is their Thor. You know, but he, their Thor is the yeah. ultimate Thor, right? Oh yeah, I mean, he was doing it long before anyone thought about. You know what I mean? Like he was like, no, let's put these, let's put these heroes that have been around for 40, 50 years, let's update them and put them in more realistic, at least in terms of movies, more realistic settings, and and just have them talk and act more like. It was the first time in a really long time, like maybe since like literally the forties, that Captain America was a soldier. I'm just going to say, it. Mark, Mark Miller is the most important creator mm. to Marvel Comics since Stanley. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go out and say, it. certainly. I mean, certainly in the last twenty, you know, twenty years, twenty two years. I mean, we talked about it. It's like who, what comic book creator in the last two decades has made the most bank. And I bet it is Mark Miller by a fucking mile. Yeah, I don't know. I I have no way of 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 knowing just, you know that. But it's, yeah. yeah, so it's you a know, good it's, guess. I mean, it's a good. I would you would think. I don't know, but yeah, I have no idea. I, yeah, it's probably. Like, I don't know who's getting paid and, for all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like him and Kirk, everyone. You know, don't forget about Stan. He was in every movie until he died, uh -huh. and then. They still found a way. Found a way. <laughs> still found a way to get him in there. Dude, get him in there. It, well, it's funny. I'm 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 replaying uh, through the Spider-Man, uh, the PS4 game. Uh, I just I love that game, and I haven't done a replay of it. And I just kind of started farting around with it. And I was like, oh no, I love this game. I'm actually going to play the whole thing. There's a fucking Stan Lee. Uh, Excelsior. Um, yeah, yeah. He's I'm the, in every he, medium. He, he run, he runs the he's the owner of the pizza joint that Mary Jane and, and Peter go to. You know, he's he's everywhere. He's he's Chairman and, and he even says I always, I always like you two kids the best. I always liked you, MJ. You've got great hair. Didn't, even though wasn't, Gwen, wasn't wasn't Gwen Stacy based on his wife? And that's why Jerry Conway killed her. Uh that seems mean, Jerry Conway. Jeez. I think why that's would... true. Wow. I think that's true. It's because it's because Gwen Stacy, if and and someone correct me if I'm wrong, I think Gwen Stacy was based on Stanley's wife 
and you Jerry were just Conway. jealous, Conway. You I, couldn't I, get a broad as good as what was yeah, her, can't remember her name? Thought, yeah, what is it? Gwen Stacy, what or Stan's wife? No, Stan's wife. I can't think of his name. What yeah, was her right. name? It was very, it was a very something very like mid century, uh, modern. It was like June or or yeah. Grace Pe- or something Pe- like Peggy. that. Peggy, old Peggy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Peggy Lee? Yeah. I don't think it was Peggy Lee. Something something <laughs> like that. But yeah, Jerry Conway always thought that Gwen Stacy was a really uh, boring character. And that's, uh, you know, that the only reason she was there is because she was based on Stan's wife. Joan. So, it was so, yeah, Joan. So he, so he fucking killed her. Well, you're a bastard. Yeah. I have a signed, co- I have a signed <laughs> copy of Death of the Stacys. And I think I even, uh, I even asked him about that. Well, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to allegedly yeah. say that. Uh, Thanks for the backup, Joe. Joe, Joe chimed in on the comments. Joe, section. you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you and Conway. <laughs> Joan Bucock Lee was her name. Joe Bucock. That's an interesting middle name. Bucock. Uh, I don't, there's no other way to say it. B o o c o c k. No other way. Bukak. There's no other way to say that name. I don't know how. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she married. Obviously, married Stan to get rid of that fucking name. Boo. Uh, boo. Uh, yeah. So, um, so apparently we uh we all like this book. I didn't fuck up. Yes. No, it was Great fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was. It was a fun. Um. It's pretty safe picking a fucking modern day classic well yeah yeah well, yeah i would call it that by the way I'd, I'd say it's a modern day classic you know it's in those you know of of that era that that mid you know you know 2000s it's one that's gonna be i think read for a long time stan did claim that uh, gwen stacy was based on his wife joan there you go uh and she was blonde at one time so other than that, I don't know the truth behind that cocksucker, Conway. Jerry Conway. <laughs> <laughs> um, whose pick? What's Some pick? say he killed Joan. She died. <laughs> 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 Allegedly, at ninety-three. He, yeah, I don't know. Jerry Did Conway I pick? Killed, killed Joan Lee. I. Uh, that's uh, the story. I'm sticking. Yeah. To it. Is it- Oh, I'm unprepared. I got. I'm, I'm, I'm always excited about these. I got to think about it. I got no answer right now. I, I forgot that it was my turn to pick. All right. Well, that's we'll, okay. We'll take we, we can... business first. Um, uh, first you have all, five minutes uh, to think about it. Oh God, no! <laughs> yeah. I mean, I got to live up to my <laughs> standards. Start thinking, Tom. Uh, we mentioned uh, real crimes. That's uh, Sal's other podcast move, where he talks. Move about... closer to your mic. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm starting to lean back. Um, so Real Crimes, which is Sal's other podcast where he talks about uh, real crimes and the movies that they are based on. Uh, it's a, Yeah, it's a, a real crime movie podcast. Uh, check that out. Um, our Patreon stuff. Uh, every week, Sal and I talk about TV and movies. And uh, we've got our first uh, ACTV in a couple weeks uh, coming up because uh, we just did Arcade Billy Super Sounds with Will Pfeiffer talking about Kill Bill Volume 2. That was fun. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that conversation. Unlike the rest of them? <laughs> yeah, it was fun. It was fun. I, I felt, I, yeah, I felt I like, like was, I don't yeah. like talking to you. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it was, it was good. I, well, I, there was a movie we all, we all it enjoyed. It was so. especially fun. It was especially fun, and yeah. So once a month we do, uh, uh, we morph into the 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 K Billy Super Sounds, and we talk about Tarantino films in order. Our next one is Death Proof. Yes. Uh, yes, I I, uh, I broke out the. Uh, the you have a steel box or steel something? case? Yeah, there yeah. It is. Version. I don't. It, this is the look at look at the how this sh- how shitty this is. So it's it's a steel case version. It's got the two, you know, Planet DVDs. Terror. Right, and these are not mm-hmm. Blu-ray; these are just DVD. But then yeah. it had—I don't even know what's on this—in a paper sleeve, another DVD. I'm not even sure what is on it. Uh, it's been so long since I opened this thing up, and it's interesting. It's, there's no markings on it. It's just a plain 
I don't know. I have no idea what, what White could be. Yeah, making I don't know. of documentary. I maybe I don't know. I'm gonna have to play it and find out. I, a I, secret I sex tape. Yeah. Quarantine. I may Quarantino have just thrown. I, it's completely possible that I just kind of threw something in there, but I don't remember <laughs> doing Mystery. that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we'll find out. We'll find out. It's it's then, just uh, it's forty five minutes yeah. of feet of dirty feet. Yeah, yeah very oh, Tarantino. Perfect. Well, we'll find out in three weeks whenever we talk about uh, Death Proof. Uh, uh, but this week we're talking about uh, TVs, movies, and all other sorts of stuff. Uh, I, I watched uh, Our Flags Mean Death today. It's that the doesn't sound HBO. fun. Uh, it's the 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 the, the Tiki Watiti. The what we do in the shadows, oh. among other things, that's this new HBO. Oh, the pirate series. thing, the pirate yeah. thing. Was yeah, it it's good? A, it's amusing. It's amusing. You're gonna hate oh. it. Uh, we'll talk better <laughs> on Sunday. Uh, Wait, how do you know I'm gonna hate it? It's uh, it's not. I don't. Know, I just I'm watching. It's so bad. This this fucking AC TV show has fucked me up so bad because I'll start watching new shows because I'm like, okay, is this something we can talk about on AC TV? And I watch it and I'm just like, what would Sal think of this? Well, why are you thinking about that? You shouldn't be thinking that when you're watching. I shouldn't a TV be show. thinking about that. No. But that's, you're in my head. I'm in your. I'm in I your head. It. I'm rent free, motherfucker. That's right. I know. I live in your right? head. Yeah, you've won. You've conquered me. Uh, you've, you've, you're you're deeply affecting Chris's enjoyment of like media. <laughs> my job it's is like, done. I really my, like my... this, but I know that Sal's gonna hate it. <laughs> I am overly critical of everything that Chris suggests to me. I, I, everything. I, every, everything. The, the... Tom, he won't even watch cartoons. <sighs> oh, I did. That? I did. Or sitcoms, cartoons. cartoons or sitcoms are kind of like fucking off the table with this guy. I did watch an uh, interactive cartoon on Netflix. That was kind of funny. Did you watch that? Which There's one? a the cat burglar or something or another. It's an interact. It's an interactive. It's basically like uh, remember that old video game, uh, uh, Dragon's, Dragon's Lair? Quest or yeah, Dragon's Lair. Mm. Or Dragon's, it's basically yeah, yes. Okay. It's basically that, but it's a it's a it's very much kind of like a Tom and Jerry meets Ren and Stimpy cartoon, oh. but it's really okay. good. It was really fun to kind of go through okay. it, and you have to help this cat burglar steal priceless art uh, and defeat the dog who's the security guard. And it was actually kind of funny. So I did enjoy that. That sounds kind of fun. Yeah. yeah okay. It was kind of fun. Uh, I'm critical. I'm you, very. I'm very. You are. Uh, you, know, you are. You are. You enjoyed it because Chris didn't suggest it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <You're> like... <laughs> Tommy that guy, man. So, like, like, literally three of my favorite shows of the last year. He's been like, nah, trash. Well, with three, yeah. <laughs> Name the three. Name the three shows and see what Tom uh, thinks. Uh, Foundation. Oh, okay. Which, which I really enjoyed. Um, uh, Snowpiercer. Okay. Um, Unnecessary. And um, uh, Arcane. I don't even know what that one is. Yeah. Pick better on. shows. That's, That's it. Just pick better shows, Chris. That's all you got to do. If you just pick better yeah. shows, we won't have this problem. Foundation. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank it's, you. It's hard sci-fi. It's hard sci-fi. Yeah. Hard, to hard to watch sci-fi. Hard to watch sci-fi, <laughs> yeah. It was some definite filler in the Hard, to, I, hard I, to stay I awake. Thought it, I, thought ended, <laughs> I thought it ended stronger than it started. And I'm not saying it's perfect. But yeah, by the end, I really I really enjoyed it. And that's I know that's a that's a hard sell because you were people. asleep and you were oh, dreaming. That's oh, why you enjoyed off. it. Uh, you can email the show at info at around comics dot com. Tom, uh, I have a suggestion up. for your pick of the pick of the month if you want. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. What do you got? How about Star Wars or the Bounty Hunters Volume One? A little Star yeah, Wars. I know you've it. been liking Star Wars. Yeah, and I haven't. I haven't read it. So I, yeah, I, let's I, do it. Why not? Uh, yeah. Yeah. All, All right. right. There yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. I've been wanting so to read that. So is it's, it it's uh, who publishes it? Is it on Hoopla? No, it's Marvel. It's on Hoopla. It's issues one okay. through five of of the Star Wars War of the Bounty Hunters. It's written by Charles Soule with art by Steve McNiven. So yes. it will. Yeah. I would imagine it'll probably oh. be good. So McNiven's so. Boba Fett's pretty cool. He oh, it's McNiven. Job. Oh, awesome. Yeah. No. Did, uh, so so we had we had. Tr- what? <laughs> Did you not listen to me? Just say that. 
Yeah, yeah. I'm just like, oh, well, I, no, I, I'm slow. I just put together that we have a nice, oh, you know, it's it's a nice little through line for, for Wolverine to that. Uh, so Charles Soule and uh, uh, Ryan Brown we had on the show, what, like a year ago or so? Something like that, yeah. We had yeah. him on talking and, about. Uh, uh, I thought it was. I thought it was. I thought it was Charles Sole because he spells his name S O U L E, and he's and he laughed. He's like, ah, no, it's it's Soul. It's um, Sweel. But, uh, <laughs> so uh, my uh, smart speaker, I won't say her name, um, uh, came on with a notification the other day that Charles Sole had a new book out and if i wanted to add it to my wish list so i would like to tell him that uh amazon says it the way i did so who's really wrong uh yeah i guess amazon's you can't argue with that uh jeff bezos yeah bezos is the is, is our overlord we can't you know <laughs> charles soleil you will you will forever now be known as charles, as charles soleil. soleil bezos bezos picked it Yep. Now you gotta live You're with done. it. You're done. Jeff now. Lemire. Yeah. Jeff Lemire wrote part of. Jeff Lemire and Mark Miller are credited as, as writing Old Man Logan Volume One. Lemire. Yeah. I don't think Lemire was involved in any of it. I, really? No, no. The 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 ongoing comic. Oh, the ongoing. Oh. Okay. Yeah. 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 You know, Lemire has done other Miller properties. Uh, he did. Um, they must be buds of some sort uh because he did a hit girl uh miniseries oh yeah you know and that's a miller property so he did yeah well did you ever read skull digger and skeleton boy yeah that was lemire right and that's kind of that's a very uh that's in the hit girl universe i think or yeah. no yeah. is it I, is yeah i think so yeah i don't remember yeah but apparently yeah is. but yeah lemire has had <laughs> some crossovers with uh with miller uh i'd like to see miller do um um you know, some stuff in the in the black hammer universe would be fun yeah yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. Mark miller. Miller. even though i think everything he writes now is oh, is, is oh, owned by or has rights uh, uh with netflix so, first rights yeah. first rights yep which i want to say i'm ready for that uh chrononauts Netflix series, Chrononauts. I like the Chrononauts. That was a good little series. Uh, all right. So so anyway, so we've got uh, our next book, Star Wars: what, War of the Bounty Hunters. War of the Bounty Hunters, Volume One, Issues uh, One through Five. Um, check out uh, our Patreon page at Patreon.com/slash Around Comics for like five bucks a month you can get extra content like uh, actv tom versus and other stuff the gutter dump my new gutter. T- <laughs> terrible comic book news show did anyone listen to it nobody listened to it. i have not listened to it yet i, I would like to know what you think about it all right i, I, will I was trying to be funny mm-hmm. but yeah I got a, I got, I, I got a, I got a um, shave. I need some at, at the curling club on Sunday, so I usually have a good hour of uh, podcast time while I'm, while I'm prepping ice. I need time to punch up some of my jokes, some of my punchlines. A little, <laughs> yeah, tighten them up. A little caters pow. I need a little uh, caters pow on pop, there. A little yeah. pop on there. <laughs> just put it in there, punch it up. Yeah, yeah, just punch, punch it up a little bit. Nice. Um, all right. Yeah, I think that'll that'll take care of this one. Uh, I'm glad that uh, everyone that uh, got to read or uh, reread Wolverine Old Man Logan enjoyed it. Uh, it's a great story. Uh, I'm glad that we all enjoyed it. Uh, we will be back next Thursday just talking about all sorts of, of comics. We have like two weeks of comics to talk about. I want to talk about Thing. Big reveal this week in The Thing. And I don't she want to know. Good. I'm not oh. spoiling one. I'm just saying there was a big reveal. Um, it was a real. I don't want to. I don't want you to reveal your big thing, Chris. Yeah, no, <laughs> please. That's what happens after we stop recording. <laughs> oh, all right, no. we'll be back next Thursday, uh, talking comics and all sorts of stuff. Uh, check us out on ACTV this week. Uh, talking about uh, TV movies. We got some Tom verses coming out here pretty soon. Uh, have a great uh, rest of your week and weekend. We'll be back again next week. In the meantime, in between time. Oh, it'll be everywhere. In. Ah.
and around, around comics. So comics. Quiet. This is a, a, a what do they call it? ASMR? ASMD? I'm trying. It's the sound of uh, page, paper, tur- paper, flipping through paper. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to just. Do you like that sound? Is that, <laughs> is that relaxing you? No. ASMR. A little ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. What just happened? Everybody in the